Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Fantasy Star Online 2 and this is basically my beginner's guide. So you just downloaded PSO2 on Steam, you just launched up the game, you're ready to play, so what should you be doing first? You will be greeted with this screen before you go to your character selection in order to create your character. The very first thing I recommend you to do is to go to the support menu and go to change player ID name. I know it's got this really scary symbol that's like, oh, this is the pay to play way, but don't worry, you're going to click on it. You're going to be able to change it once for free. So what exactly is the player ID name? The player ID name is simply your account's name. By default, it's going to be PN and a string of numbers, so no one's going to know who you are. However, once you change it, you can change it to whatever name you want, and that's how people identify that, oh, that's you. The reason why this is so important is because if you look at my characters over here, you can name your characters the exact same name. So you see over here, my braver is called Karopi. My other braver is also called Karopi, and my ranger is also called Karopi. So the only way people are going to be able to determine whether you're the real Karopi or if you're a fake Karopi is through your player ID. And that's why it's very important to go to support menu and set your player ID to something that you'll remember and all your friends will remember. That way they can add you to their friends list and to their alliance, so forth and so on. Okay, that's the very first thing you should do. Next thing is coming to your character creation slash selection. Over here, if you are a free to play player, you will be limited to three character slots like me. However, if you want additional character slots, you will need to spend AC, which is premium currency, in order to buy more. It'll cost 500 AC to buy an additional slot up to 12 slots. However, if you're watching this video after the Steam release or after August 5th, then this has been increased to 20. So you can have 20 characters if you're crazy. But for me, three characters is good enough. I recommend focusing on one character at the very beginning because you're not very rich, you don't have a lot of money. So you should focus on one character, gear them up, and then slowly start making your alts after you've got a foundation on one character. So the next thing is character creation. So I can't actually create a character since I already have three characters already and I can't create another one without spending money and I'm too cheap to spend money. So we're just gonna pop into my character over here. All right, so once you go to your character creation screen, you will be able to pick one of four classes. So I will be using my guild members as examples. That way you can see the extent of the abominations that we can make, but uh, I think Mars did a pretty good job on his character over here. So this is the cast race. Just think of it as the Gundam, the Evangelion, the whatever, the robot race, okay? So the cast race excels in defense since they are mechanical beings. Obviously, they're a little bit more sturdy than biological people and Newmans and all the other races, okay? The next race is the Newmans. So the Newmans are basically an elf-like character, and over here you can see this is Luna's character. And um, yeah, you know, they've got pointy ears, they look cute, and um, that's pretty much it for the Newmans. So other than casts and Newmans, we've also got Doomans. So Doomans are basically like demons mashed in with humans, all right? So you can get horns, cat ears, separate colored eyes, and so forth and so on. And so this is Jayco's character on a giant banana boat. And last but not least, we've got the regular good old human class. So the human class doesn't have anything special, they're just regular humans. Humans. So uh, there's that, okay? So now that we've covered all four different races, is there a reason that you should be picking a specific race to play a certain class or not? And to be perfectly honest, I don't think it matters too much. Unless you are min-maxing, it doesn't matter what race you pick. Just pick whatever race you're most comfortable with, mainly because you can do all the content in the game even if you go for the most ridiculous builds. So for example, casts or the Gundams have very good physical defense. However, they're not very suitable to be mages. You can make a cast mage and still blast through everything in the game really, really easily. It's just that, hey, your magic damage will not be as high as someone who's more suitable to be a magic caster such as a Newman or a Dooman. And that's really about it. So in my personal opinion, it doesn't matter. Just pick whatever race that you like because fashion is the true end game in PSO2. So let's say you've created your character, but then you found out that you've messed up big time. You created your character with one ear bigger than the other, right? And you've created like a monstrosity Dumbo 
whole character. So what do you do? Don't worry, the game gives you a bunch of salon free passes for just playing the game through events, so forth and so on, which will allow you to change your cosmetic looks on your character. So if you do mess up, don't worry, just play through the story, play through the game, and you will get a salon free pass so that you can fix up your character. However, the salon free pass cannot fix three things. The first thing is stupidity. If you're retarded, it cannot fix that. Number two is if you pick the wrong race, it cannot fix that either. And number three, if you pick the wrong gender, it can't fix that either. So for the last two, you know, your race and your gender, make sure that you pick the right race and the right gender, since the Salon Pass cannot fix those problems, all right? If you want to fix those problems, you will have to remake a new character. All right, clear? Good, let's move on. All right, you finally completed your character creation. Now you need to pick a class. In the game, there are nine classes total. However, in the character creation screen, you will only see six classes. It doesn't matter what class you pick because you can switch classes at any time. It's super, super easy. All you need to do is click select main class. Oh, I don't want to be a braver anymore. I want to be a summoner. I'm just going to click that. Boom, I am now a summoner. Oh, I don't like summoner. I want to go back to braver. Boom, I'm a braver again, okay? So it's super, super easy to switch classes. You can switch at any time and um, yeah no pressure so we can see here that there are nine classes over here and you're gonna be asking me hey Caro I don't know what class I want to play so I personally recommend the braver why because with the power of God and anime on my side I will destroy my enemies but there is a much better way than just listening to me because I spout a lot of nonsense so we're gonna run over to this counter right here and I'm gonna show you a godsend all right so you're gonna run to this counter over here called the quest counter cleric Rebecca you're gonna talk to Rebecca and you're gonna go to practice quest in practice quest over here it literally has Standard training, hunter training, ranger training, forest training, blah, 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 right? Just select any of the trainings over here or just do all of them if you want in order to get a taste of what that class plays like. So for me, I did the braver training. I was like, yes, I like weeb, katana, cool anime stuff. So I picked the braver. But maybe you don't like wielding a katana, running into the enemy, screaming hasagi hasayo, and maybe you prefer playing a summoner, or maybe you prefer playing a force or a caster, or maybe you prefer a ranger because you want to stand at range with a gun. You know, there are many different classes over here, and I recommend you to do the training for each of these classes to figure out what class suits your playstyle the best, okay? So once you create your character, recommend just start at the hunter training, or if you Already sort of know what class you want to play just do the training anyway so that you have a better idea on how the class actually works all right so we finally created our character we finally picked what class we want how do we level up so when you press your escape key over here, you go to the little globe here and you go to arcs mission. You're going to notice that, hey, we've got main missions, daily missions, weekly missions, limited time missions and tier missions, right? So the main one that you want to be focusing on when you first make your character is the main mission. OK, so the main mission over here is basically the tutorial. It's going to teach you how to play. Speak to Afin. That's going to be your first quest over here. And Afin is going to be right here. All right. This guy, he's got an Australian accent. He's like, what's going on? And you're going to talk to him and he's got client orders and he's going to teach you like how to switch weapons, how to use photo arts, how to use techniques, choose your skills wisely, and basically just go through his freaking client order so that you kind of learn the game. If you ever get stuck anywhere try talking to the arcs handbook guide leotina over here and she's gonna be like hey man do you want to get exp here let me tell you how to get exp but you know what since you're watching my video right now i'm gonna explain each category in a very easy to understand manner step number one main missions please do them the main missions are going to be the tutorials teaching you how to play your class teaching you how to play the game so forth and so on and it is also story missions which will give you a lot of rewards which will aid you in your leveling process next up are daily missions daily missions are missions that come up every single day duh and basically when these come up just do them because they are a very nice exp boost weekly missions are weekly missions duh please do these because they give you a lot of masetta they give you a lot of money and a lot of exp so just do this every Every single week so other than the main mission the daily mission and the weekly mission there are two more things that you should keep note of and that is the recommended missions as well as the daily orders so first of all let's go to the recommended missions so we're gonna walk over to Rebecca talk to her and right here we click main missions and recommended quests 
And here, these three are all recommended quests. I recommend you to do the first one every single day, mainly because there's a lot of quests related to this one. So just click on it and then you'll be able to select a difficulty. And once you select it, let's say I want to do super hard. It's going to give you five options. However, only the top three matter. And that is whether we want to accept the quest, we want to join a party on the current block, or we search for parties on other blocks. So if you just accept the quest over here, you're just going to accept the quest and you're going to be able to run in and go do everything solo. However, let's say that you want this game to be open to the public and you want people to join your game. You can tick the active recruitment message and then accept in current block. That way people know that you want to play with them and they will join your game. If you don't tick this, then people will be like, oh, maybe he wants to do it solo and they might not join your game. And that is the recommended quest over here. I recommend you guys to do all of the recommended quests mainly because of this little box right here. There is a chance of receiving a gift when you clear these quests. And these gifts can range from EXP boosters all the way to keys. So what these keys will be used for is you can go to a solo dungeon if you have these keys and you'll be able to get a ton of exp and that is probably the fastest way to level up and so you kind of want to do all the recommended quests so that you get a chance of getting all these keys and once you get these keys you'll be able to power level really really quickly so last but not least is the daily orders so we're gonna run to the side over here to my favorite npc officer fina so when you talk to officer fina you're gonna notice that she has an entire list of all these quests and these quests over here will reset every single day so you can see that the top three quests over here with the up arrow with the daily boost arrow will always be tied with the first recommended quest that you can accept from the other NPC. So let's go over here. We don't need to run all the way there. There's an NPC right here, but I don't really like her. I, I just don't like her, okay? But you can talk to her, click on main quest and the recommended quest. You can see that this is seabed exploration, right? And we're going to go back to Officer Fina, talk to client order, and you're going to notice here, if you click the up arrow, you can sort the dungeons by name. So let's go to seabed and you're going to notice that, hey, look, the top three quests with the up arrows all related to seabed. Kill these guys, kill these guys and kill these guys. And so this is always going to be the case. So it's super, super easy. So if you ever get confused and you don't know, hey, how do I complete that quest? Just sort through by the dungeons over here. So look, I go to forest. I'm like, OK, so these two quests are available in forest. I go to volcano. Oh, there's no quest there. I go to desert. Oh, look, there's a quest available. How much money does it give me? Oh, circuit complete desert exploration. Hey, maybe I should do desert because it gives me 100,000 meseta and so forth and so on. That way you can just filter through all your dungeons over here so that you know where each mission is and that way you can complete your quests much much easier without being super confused because i know when i started this game i'm like oh great there's a whole bunch of quests i want to do like okay circuit desert exploration it has the name in it so i'm like okay that's the desert map however for like maps like this suppress ocean i'm like well, I don't know what map that is. So um, it's very, very nice to be able to sort through the maps over here so that you know exactly what map you should be doing. All right, you may have noticed that I have switched to another character because there's a very important tip that I wanna show you over here that not many people know, or at least I didn't know until much, much later. So let's say that you're talking to Officer Fina, right? And you're accepting quests. Let's say Circuit Dragon Altar Breakthrough H. And you're like, okay, sure, I want to do this quest because it gives me 60,000 meseta, right? So when you talk to the quest giver over here, you can check by going to main quest and expedition over here. And you're going to notice that when you scroll down to dragon altar, hey, it doesn't have this blue symbol over here. You see this blue picture with like a list and like a person next to it? If it doesn't have that picture, it means that you do not have a quest for that dungeon. And it's like, hey, wasn't that quest dragon altar something, something, something H? Why isn't it on dragon altar exploration? and that's because it may be a submission so over here when you come to submissions and I go to time attack and right here you're gonna see breakthrough maneuvers dragon alter H normal whatever and this has the little picture of the list and the person so that way you'll never do a mission that you've not accepted a quest on so another example would be the desert so I have not accepted the desert quest yet. So I talk to the quest giver. I go to main quest and expeditions. And you're going to notice that, hey, I don't have this symbol next to desert, but desert is a daily. However, once you talk to Officer Fina and accept her client order, it will have that picture. So we scroll down here and circuit desert exploration, 114,000 meseta, right? So we're going to accept that quest. It's like, thank you for tackling this, blah, blah, blah. So once you've accepted the quest, again, we talk to the quest giver, go to main quest, expeditions, 
and boom, look, it's got the little blue symbol now. Once it's got the blue symbol, it means that, hey, that's a client order, everyone. We should be doing these missions. And that is a very quick and easy way to just browse through all the missions to know what quests you guys should be doing. So to recap, I highly recommend you guys to do the recommended quests, all of them, mainly because they give you the little treasure boxes, which has a chance of giving you the keys, which allow you to level up super, super fast. And the next thing is to go through expeditions and just scroll through the list over here and see any of the ones with the little blue symbol, which means that, hey, you've got a client order from Officer Fina for that dungeon. You should do it and just blast through that one. Keep in mind that it will also tell you what difficulty you need to do it on. So you can see here that, hey, this client order is associated with super hard, not with very hard, hard or normal. It has to be super hard. Next up again will be the main missions, the daily missions and the weekly missions. The daily missions are always going to be associated with the recommended missions. So you can clear them all silly, silly easily. Keep in mind that they are different based on your level. So my ranger over here is level 75. So my daily quest is going to be the same every single day. Clear an expedition, an arcs mission or a limited time quest, complete a daily order, have a drink, use a booster and clear all daily mission. It's going to be these five quests every single day. This will never change. Okay. So all I need to do is the recommended quest on super hard. I just need to complete any of those daily orders. I need to have a drink and I need to eat a food or use a booster. And I need to clear all four of these quests in order to clear the fifth one. And that is a ton of EXP that I'll get as well as a bunch of items. Okay. So that is the daily order. Next up are the weekly missions. So weekly missions reset every single week and it is in your best interest to do them. Because look over here, take orders and make even more Masetta. All I need to do is make 240,000 Masetta and I get 1 million Masetta back. Keep in mind that the weekly missions are also based off level. So the higher level you are, the better the rewards are going to be. So it's in your best interest to level up as fast as possible in order to redeem the best rewards. But I wouldn't rush myself in leveling too hard, mainly because this is a social game it's a casual game you don't need to go super super duper hardcore unless you want to of course so I highly recommend you guys to do your weeklies because it's a lot of money you make a million Masetta over here you make another 405,000 Masetta over here and just do the missions here okay it's also a ton of exp you know 240,000 exp here do the daily grind 15 times another 240,000 exp and you know the weeklies are a great way to level up because it's a huge boost of Masetta, a huge boost of exp and lastly again are the main missions you know talk to jen get this material talk to naomi and you get exp boosters like you know just just do these as well these are all associated with the tutorial and basically teaching you how to play so yeah yeah, your priority list is basically weekly missions, daily missions, daily orders, main missions, and that's about it. All right. So I know it sounds like a lot of information, but don't worry about it, guys. Just play at your own pace. It's a very casual game. If you guys have anything that you're not sure of, ask me in the comment section below. I'll make a video for you. I'll explain it to you. There's no worries. It's a very, very relaxing game. It's very casual. There's nothing hardcore about it. I know that the systems may be a little bit complicated at the very beginning, but once you get it, you actually realize it's very, very easy. Okay. And if you ever get lost and let's say that I'm sleeping and I'm not available, always talk to the ARC's handbook guide, okay? She basically explains everything in a very easy to understand manner. Rake in the Masetta. How do I make more Masetta? It tells you do your daily orders, do your ARC's mission, do gathering. How to get more EXP. The best client orders for gaining EXP part one. When starting out, Han's client orders are good for gaining EXP and it shows you the map where Han's is. And you can see accepting orders from the same area. Look, if you're doing forest, accept these quests. If you're doing volcanic caves, accept these quests. And they give you a ton of EXP. So please read whatever Leontina over here has to say because it is a very very easy way to get a lot of exp and learn the game you know we're gonna run over here we're gonna talk to hands look i'm gonna sort it by forest hey look all these quests over here give a ton of exp 30,000 exp 20,000 exp 30,000 exp 30,000 exp so you know hands is your best friend when you want to level up okay last but not least before i end the video and that is is there any purpose in maxing out the level on every single class and the answer is yes 
because you get bonus stats which are account wide which apply to all your characters when you max out a class so i will post up a little png image right now to show you that you can get a ton of extra stats if you max out every single class so you don't have to max out every single class on all your characters you just need to do it across the account so for example my character over here is a level 75 ranger which means my other characters do not need to max out the ranger to level 75 and also keep in mind you just need to hit level 75 in order to redeem these rewards i know by the time that you guys are probably watching this video the max level is 80. however you just need to hit 75 and you will gain all those stat boosts and those rewards you do not need to hit level 80 on all the classes okay and even if you do hit level 80 on all those classes you will not receive any extra stat boosts okay well that's about it hopefully this video was helpful if it was i would appreciate a like and a subscribe and i'll see you guys in tomorrow's video bye what can I say except you're welcome.